We are starting Ruby True's Human Design Overview. Now, I specifically call this an overview because there are two dozen different types of analysis or analyses that exist. And this particular one goes over the very, very basics. Now, what you learn in this particular experience is all you truly need to know about everything human design. So what is human design? Human design is your energetic blueprints. Human design allows us to remember who we were when we were born. We are born into a race, maybe a religion, a sex, and we are conditioned to be those things. Now we are raised, we are possibly educated, um, so we go to school. Um, our parental figures, they expect certain things from us. School expects certain things from us. So, you know, we change ourselves to fit into what our authoritative figures want from us. And, you know, when we leave the nest and we think we're free because we're finally on our own, are we really free though? We live in a society where there are laws. We work in a place where there are terms of service. So we do have to manipulate ourselves to change a little for those things. So that's what we're talking about is that human design reminds us of who we were before all of that stuff happened, brings us back to who we are. And it could even be such things as, you know, trauma happened and we have coping mechanisms or, you know, there are other people in this particular category who are doing interesting things and, you know, hey, that person over there is doing something different. Maybe I should be like them and maybe I'll be that successful. But, you know, you've chose to stick to who you are. Um, instead of go full time, different ASMR. So human design, it is your energetic blueprints. And this is you when you come into this world and it is you when you leave this world as well. Let's teach you a, more about human design and yourself. The most important thing to know about human design is that it allows you to understand your choice mechanism. Now, what we call a choice mechanism in human design is strategy and authority. <clears throat> strategy and authority. This is your choice mechanism, how you say yes and no for your body. Correct choices for you. So, um, that's what we're here to do today, is to teach you how to say your proper yes and no for you, for your energy, to remind you of who you are. Now, why would we do that? If you, you say yes, and you follow that yes, you are allowing your purpose to flow through you. If your body says no, uh-uh, then, and you follow that no, uh-uh, then you are allowing your purpose to flow through you. So what am I, what am I saying here? If you understand your yes and no, and you follow those, you are allowing your purpose to flow through you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you don't need to get your brain involved. We don't need to get, you know, all of these questions of what next, what do I have to do? What should I do? I have to do. No, it's what I'm saying here is that if you follow your strategy and authority, and I will be teaching you how to say your yes and no, 
then if you follow that yes and no when it pops up, then you are allowing your purpose to flow through you. So your incarnation cross is your purpose. Um, whether it's you, Ruby True, that we're looking at, or anybody else watching this, your incarnation cross is always your purpose. So you are the left angle cross of demands. 52, 58, 21, 48. Now, Ruby, if you're going to Google this, make sure you put in the left angle and the numbers, please. Um, what's interesting is, is that when I Googled it myself years and years ago, I didn't resonate with what it said. Why? Because I wasn't me. I wasn't saying my yes and no based on my choice mechanism enough yet that I didn't recognize who I was as a person. So, you know, in order for anything in the chart to ring true for you, you need to be you first, right? So that's why we start by understanding how to say your yes and no. So sometimes people don't resonate with their purpose because, you know, maybe they're living a life that is so completely for someone else that um, they don't resonate with their purpose because they're just in such a different spot. All right. We're not going to be talking about your purpose. What? Your purpose is sitting right here in front of you and I'm not going to talk about it? Nope. That's a different reading. <laughs> but I just wanted to let you know that that exists and why would we even bother with this experience? <clears throat> because if you live authentically you for who you are, you are going to allow your purpose to naturally flow through you with each decision that you make. And I think that's so beautiful. Um, personally, um, although I feel I'm beautiful, I never found a place of true love for myself. And it seems like the more and more I said my yes and no based on who I was as a person, Interestingly enough, I was 70 pounds heavier than I am today, and I found love for myself at my heaviest weight, whereas, I mean, I've been 10 pounds less than what I am today, and I thought it would feel different. I thought I would love myself. I thought everything would be different. So I found that the best way for me for self-love was just by saying my yes and no, and oh, that's priceless. I feel like I'm so young, even though I'm 34. I feel like I'm so young and so blessed and so lucky to have a true sense of love for thyself, really. Um, because yeah, it's okay to appreciate what's on the outside, but I never truly appreciated what was on the inside. <clears throat> now, Those are reasons why we would play around with human design. We didn't even get into any information about who you are yet. So we're going to switch gears. We are going to go into the most important information. And then when we switch out of this, I'll tell you that we're going into some brain candy kind of information. So the most important piece of information that you need to know as I said before, is your strategy and authority. But one thing that I'm going to toss at you is your type, is that you are a generator. And the reason why I'm throwing this at you is because it's hitting you at the DNA level. You are a generator. You're not supposed to understand it. It's just, that's what you are. That's this jargon. But let's talk about your choice mechanism, your yes and no you have your strategy and authority. This is your yes and no, like I've said. Strategy and authority, that's what I'm gonna be calling it from now on, your strategy and authority, instead of your choice mechanism or your yes and no. So your strategy and authority, your authority is your sacral. And it happens to be that because you are a generator, you are here to respond and that response comes from the sacral. 
I know that was a bunch of jargon, but that's okay. You don't need to follow it because I'm going to explain what I just said. You, my love, Ruby True, you've been gifted with these guttural sounds that we, that cavemans have, or, you know, babies have those primal guttural sounds. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Or, uh-huh. Or, uh... So, yeah, you've been gifted these sounds, these guttural sounds. You know how when babies like something, they're like, ooh. Or when babies don't like something, they kind of like, eh. That's what we're talking about, those kind of sounds. Those primal guttural sounds that are usually conditioned away from us. Because when we say, yeah, or uh-huh, <laughs> our... Uh, authoritative figures slap that out of us and say say your yes say your no saying uh-huh and uh-uh that's not appropriate in society no so a lot of generators are deconditioned away from the gift that they've been given and listen to this 70% of the world are generators I'm a generator just like you and I definitely was deconditioned away from my uh-huh and uh-uh because my mother said it's inappropriate to say those words and, you know, speak correctly for society. Um, so a lot of people do lose touch with their uh-huh and uh-uh. Now, one would say gut feeling, yeah, but it's, it's really like uh-huh and uh-uh. So let's maneuver over what an uh-huh and uh-uh means what is the response now okay let's talk about the fact that you're a generator first so as a generator we're conditioned to manifest i'm not saying that you're not allowed to manifest that's not what i'm saying it's just that what i'm saying is that Generators are here to respond to life, not to necessarily initiate and, and mutate things the way that manifestors do. Only 7% of the world are manifestors and not even they can initiate instantly. So that's what I'm talking about is that <sighs> generators we are conditioned that, you know, you got to work, 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 and manifest the life of your dreams. But the thing is, is that all you got to do is respond. That was one of the biggest disappointments that I've heard. Now, let me elaborate on what that means for me. Now, I wanted to manifest my business. I wanted to put it out there. I wanted to um, be a psychic. I wanted to be an intuitive leader. Um... So the thing is, is that this goes a little bit deeper into my human design personally, but I was at work and I was like, I need something better than this. So that's what I responded to was I needed something better than this. So I responded to starting my business because I wanted something that I could be happy about and going to. And then everything that I responded to from there on it was like I responded to trying Reiki on people I responded to trying theta healing on people and then I responded to dang I don't like doing energy healing on other people that's just for me so I responded to trying different other things but I like I started doing psychic readings uh, for others and I responded to really enjoying that you're here to respond you have this aha uh -huh and uh-uh choice mechanism that you were gifted with and let me explain aha uh -huh and uh-uh maybe i should finish my idea about the manifestation energy you need to respond to when the proper timing is for you to bring things out to the world that's all i'm saying and it'll make more sense once i tell you how to respond uh-huh and uh-uh now let's talk about a response uh-huh and uh-uh. A response is not thinking about something, saying, hi, myself, 
should I go to that class? That's not what it's talking about, no. No. Usually the word should is a good indicator that your brain's involved. <laughs> so, um, it's not an internal question that you've asked yourself. No, it's like an environmental cue. So let's talk about that. Maybe someone uh, asked you to go to the store and you're like, uh-uh. Or you're like, uh, well, I suggest you not going to the store because that's what your body said. You don't, it's not, no, it's not right for you at this particular moment. Maybe if before the person actually leaves the house and asks you again, are you sure you want to go to, I don't want to go to the store. Are you sure you want to come, don't want to come with me? And you're like, oh yeah, I want to go. So like, just because in that particular moment, the question that was asked wasn't proper for you. Maybe five minutes later it will be, you know? Um, when we're talking about a response, um, it's an environmental cue. So maybe you're, I forget if you have a dog or a cat, I'm sorry. So let's just talk about a cat. Um, maybe your cat used a cat litter because they're an indoor cat and, you know, you don't want to be eating uh, cat poop particles in the air all day. So you instantly respond to going and cleaning the cat litter and fixing that situation. You know, it's an environmental cue. It doesn't, just because, um, I'm a person who doesn't leave the house often, but when I do, of course, I encounter a lot of people. But just because you might live um, just with fur babies or one or two other people doesn't mean that you don't have things to respond to. Um, I live with my fiance and my two cats, and I surely have a lot of things to respond to. Like the fact that my cats moved and I want to respond to fixing the fact that... <laughs> you can see the chair in the background. So I'm responding to fixing this because things have changed in the moment, right? Um, there's definitely a lot of different things to respond to. You know, as a content creator, you're consistently watching chat and responding to chat, you know, and you fix yourself in the moment to whatever is needed because you're an ASMR artist. Maybe outside starts to get loud you respond to whatever you need to do in that moment, right? So that's what we're talking about. You knew and you have known that you are a sound healer and you responded to wanting to go to school and you put it out there and other people responded to assisting you with that and you're currently, if not already finished, your sound healing um, school experience. So that's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful, and it actually ties into the deeper experiences within your chart. We might run over it um, if we have enough time to later. So you are here to respond to external things, but that's not necessarily all the things that are here to be responded to because, okay, you're sleeping in your bed and your eyes pop open. Why? Are you finished? being uh, in bed because you're done, you're well rested? Did you open up your eyes because your cats are just meowing their heads off? Are your eyes popped open because you have this internal cue of, I gotta go pee. Maybe when your eyes pop open, your brain starts running 20 hours <laughs> or 20 miles a minute. And that's why you possibly respond to doing your next thing, you know? Maybe you respond to your bladder being full, so you respond to lifting the covers off of you. So you respond to sitting up. Do you respond to touching your phone first or do you respond to going directly to your bathroom? Well. You know, it's getting to be fall and, you know, I haven't turned on my, my heat yet. So the, my room's actually quite chilly. So after I took a, off the blankets from my bed, I respond to uh, it being a little bit chilly in my room. So I put on my house robe or house coat, whatever a person calls it. It's different everywhere. So you put on your house robe, 
your house coat so that you're a little bit warmer so that when you go down uh, and use a washroom it's a little bit warmer for you so um, yeah those were some responses why did you wake up did you respond to using your phone or not uh, you responded no because you're gonna be dealing with content creation the rest of the day so you might as well just have a few moments to yourself before the content creation starts so you decide or respond to leaving your phone there having a few moments to yourself and the getting at it later you respond to putting on your robe because it was a little chilly you respond to getting out of bed because you know your bladder was full so there's many different things to respond to now what's interesting is that I told you earlier is that you're not a, a manifester and what, what I'm talking about there is that you're not necessarily here to initiate things spontaneously you know you thought about it and you want it now that's not necessarily what your energy is here to do you're here to respond so yeah maybe it is shiny maybe it is frilly maybe you do respond to it what I do is I write it down on a list and um, when I have some time when I have some energy I go through my list and I go down uh-uh 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 <sighs> nah. And then I keep on going down my list until I'm, I find something like, yeah, uh-huh, I want to work on that. So um, I responded earlier to wanting to do something and I wrote it on the list and then I eventually had the proper timing in my energy for that thing to finally be externalized or I responded to finally initiating it, right? So here's an example. I do eventually want to do a deck of cards for myself regarding my gemstones that I have here. And I've responded to wanting to do that for years. And um, I'm glad that I haven't done it yet. Why? Because it's it wouldn't be as good as I want it to be when I make the product. And I'm happy that I haven't initiated the sequence yet. Just because I wanted it a couple years ago, it doesn't mean that I need it a couple years ago. And that's okay. And listen, if you respond to something that's you think is right for you and you no longer respond uh-huh to it, you don't, that's just a clear indication. It's not right for you anymore. So uh-huh and uh-uh, you are a generator here to respond. So like I said, um, don't feel so much pressure to be that manifester. Respond to the things in life. See what you say uh-huh and uh-uh to. See what's correct for you. Is your brain saying, I shoulda, coulda, woulda? I need to, I have to. I have to go harder, better, faster, stronger. Um, so, what are you responding to in life? I suggest that those are the things that you bring out to the world. And, um be the martyr of I'm, I'm getting into like jargon here when I said martyr <laughs> um, now although you do have this response in the moment it doesn't necessarily mean that you have this instantaneous access to being spontaneous or risky just because you respond to the now, it doesn't mean that it should be instantaneous. Um, now, I want to talk about one more thing that's kind of within this same understanding of your aha uh -huh and uh uh. It's raining out enough that I can hear it. That's awesome. As a generator that is here to respond through your sacral, what I think is beautiful is that a not self theme is frustration. What does that even mean? So you are here to respond. Let's just say your body said, aha, uh -huh, and you decided not to do it because you were scared or fearful of some reason. And you're doing the opposite of what your body said. That's what a not self is, not self expression. So, you know, if your body said, uh-uh, don't do it, and you decide to do it anyway, that's a not self-expression. If your body said, uh, I don't know, and you don't let yourself the room to decide and get clarity 
on what that response actually is and you do whatever, <laughs> that's a not self. So what, why am I talking about the not self? It's because the not self theme of frustration is a key indicator in your life where things need to change. So I'm going to ask you, Ruby, where are you frustrated in, in life? What aren't you doing for yourself? What has to change in order for that fr frustration to possibly subside? Now, I'm not telling you that you need to hop into something or quit something, but maybe the commitments that you're already in, what has to change in order for that frustration to be gone? Now, in the energy realm, the intuitive realm, you know, we hear the things, namaste, love, light, and peace, right? Um, which is nice, but that is slightly pushing away all the other feelings that we have, right? The anger, the disappointment, and the frustration. I know we wish love, light, and peace to everybody, right? But, you know, when we shove away our frustration or for other types, anger and disappointment, you're shov shoving away an opportunity to up-level. So not self themes, in my opinion, are an opportunity for you to up level. If you're frustrated in life, what are you doing for yourself? Don't shove that frustration away and don't pretend it doesn't exist because it does. And why? What are you doing for yourself? What needs to change? So the next question is, is like, well, how do I change it? Well, you respond to whatever comes up. That's how you change it. You respond, aha uh -huh and uh -huh to get you through the thing that needs to be changed. I can't tell you how to change it because only you and your energy knows what's right for you. It's going to give you the proper guidance and tra 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 <laughs> trajectory to get you through it and past it and by it. Hi, girl. Um, so as a generator, you're given many gifts. You're here to respond, uh-huh and uh-uh. You're given those guttural gifts of cavemen babies. <laughs> and frustration is your not-self theme gift to tell you that something needs to change instead of what our brain thinks needs to change. <laughs> 